Hey guys, I'm back with a new book. This one is a design team project for Genevieve Designs. And it was using the Everlasting mini album templates, which are really cool. All the links will be down below so that you can go and check them out for yourself. This particular book was inspired by the life of Coco Chanel. So as I investigated this and I started to learn more and more about her, I discovered that I loved her. So now we'll move forward with showing you the book. The closure is a strand of pearls. Just so happened that it fit. I picked it up at a, an antique store and it wrapped around the book perfectly three times. So that's the front with the closure. That's the back with the closure. I thought that was probably one of my favorite parts. And then to take it off, you just press it. And if this is being given as a gift, this is an actual strand of pearls. So it can be it can be worn <clears throat> by the recipient. Excuse my voice, I woke up with a a cold today. On the front there are antique buttons, um, an old distressed card. This is a piece of Victorian lace that I found at an antique store. This is a little tuck spot with a piece of lace. And then I created the label that says property of Coco Chanel. However, not everyone would want a book that says property of Coco Chanel, so I made it so that it could be changed. A new recipient could put something else in here. So I like that idea. Oh, I liked it age distressed. Of course, that's how I do everything. <clears throat> so the book itself is covered in material. It's a big book. I couldn't stop making it. <laughs> and <clears throat> here's the back with the, uh, this is different antique lace. Um, I'm pretty sure all of these are Victorian laces. So on the back, I put a piece of material here to make it a pocket going in this direction. And then I lined it with paper here to make it a pocket going in this direction. And there's some seamstress stuff in there. So that's the back. Now for the inside. The inside is covered with muslin. This is tea stained muslin. And I added cheesecloth, some, some old tea stained cheesecloth that I had in the edges. I didn't do that throughout the whole book. <clears throat> You'll see when I go through. I only did it on the outside edges and I chose not to put a pocket here because I really liked how this made it look antique and old and just really cool. I didn't want to cover it. So here <clears throat> is the first pocket. This was going to be what I was going to show you today. This is a stamp that I foiled. So I was going to show you how to do that on both sides but I chose something else because I found something cooler this I believe is an actual hat that she created I'm not positive about that I did find it in several places and then there's some top cards in there and some journaling cards so this was done with a die cut so it's using Jennifer's template the doors and then I embossed the doors and then when I was done embossing, I die cut a, a hole with a die that I have and I lined it with gold paper. So that's how that was created. And then in here, these are the, since this is a fantasy Coco Chanel journal, <laughs> these are the fantasy girls. She did work as a showgirl. So in my head, I was thinking these make kind of cool ideas that she might've had or sketches that she might've had or even maybe tin type photos that she would have of the, sh the other showgirls that were working in the place where she was. Each girl is named. This one is Madeline. And this is, I did this. I colored this in because it would be the early idea for her little black dress. Um, <clears throat> these are Prima stamps. And these are the actual names of the Prima girls. I was going to use a Prima girl stamp to show you how I did this. This is, this is tea stained paper. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of a glare from the light. This is tea stained paper and it's done on tissue paper. And then the tissue paper is laid on that, that and it's waxed. So I'm going to show you that today, but I'm not going to use one of the Prima stamps. I'm actually going to use a different stamp, which you'll see in a minute. <clears throat> oh, this is the closure. This is a safety pin with an antique button. 
I didn't think of this until I got to the end of the journal. So the other ones are done with paper, regular paper clips. But if I had it to do over, I would use that on all of them. This is the next section. This is, okay. This is all lined with paper, age distressed, and then I put antique lace here. And here is a snap closure. I looked into that to make sure that snap closures were around in the 1800s. They were late 1800s and early 1900s when she would have been working as a seamstress and in the orphanage and all that. So the, here we have more packets. This is the Harley script design. This is another hat design. Pretty sure that was her, but I wouldn't swear to it in court. This is one of the bow templates. So the way I did this was I took black paper, made the template. I used a white gel pen to trace, made the template, covered it in um, silk black ribbon, and then I cut it out and put a pearl on top. So that would be one of her hat ribbons. We have some hat pins, hat pin here. That's a <clears throat> a uh, bead. This would be one of her lovers. I don't know if it is, but my feeling is I think it might be Etienne, the first man who kept her, but I'm not positive. And then this would be a ribbon that she cut off of some flowers that she got. So she died in 1971. So this was her early journal. As fantasy, of course, this is her early journal. So it would be really old. It would be about a hundred years old, if it were really hers. <laughs> okay, so here's another pocket. The next page is a pocket right here. I don't have anything in there, but I do have something behind it. I attached it on four sides and left the top open. I used an envelope template that I had and I created the envelope. And then on this, I put a pin behind the card and then I, or I'm sorry, a magnet behind the card and I backed it. That way I could put pins on there and they'll stick. See? I thought that was kind of fun. And this is a Tim Holtz little <clears throat> button thing. So I took some vintage and antique buttons that I have and I attached them to that. I thought this would make a cool gift for a seamstress, if you know one, or even, you know, anyone who sews. A young girl who's getting started into sewing or um, is a student, you know. Okay. New card, new model. <laughs> these are this one I did twice because I wanted to show you the difference. If you, these are watercolored on um, on the tissue paper. So if you use a lot of color, this is what it would look like. If you use just a small amount of color, it would look more antique. Her name is Claire. I, I did all their names in script writing, and so <clears throat> personally for this book because I wanted it to look old. I didn't, I colored, I painted them from behind and I, I didn't paint them a lot because I wanted it to look muted. Here's some tuck cards. These are quotes by Coco Chanel, which I do have to write on here so that she's credited. Elegance is when the inside is as beautiful as the outside. That's the first one. A girl shouldn't be, a girl should be two things, who and what she wants. I only put some, you know, pops of color throughout the book. Like here, I have the two purples. Back there, I have some black on the pockets. Here, I have a, a belly band, and it has the magnet closed, so I used it again for pins. I think these are <clears throat> stitch markers. I'm not exactly sure, but this is a safety pin. We have a little bird with a symbol. I thought that was cool. And then here's more of this Harley script and some little things tucked in here. These are seamstress papers. So that's another pocket. And the next, these, these are two models. So this is Olivia and Maya. Again, I only colored their hair because I wanted them to look very antique. And here you can see, <coughs> excuse me, here you can see where the paper clip and the button was used rather than the safety pin as a paper clip. But like I said, I do that one over. Left this page blank because I really liked it. It has a hat on there. Here's another pocket, some pearls. Now this is what I'm gonna show you today. This is a heartfelt creation stamp. 
and I discovered that I really liked it on top of the Harley script. The girls are done on tea stain paper. This is done directly on the Harley script, which technically you could even print onto tea stain paper and do it that way. But I loved how it came through. So that's what I'm going to show you how to use the wax for that today. That's a pocket. <clears throat> Another pocket on the back. So these would be little business cards for seamstresses. Shows you the perfume because she did. Everyone knows her perfume. Another belly band. <clears throat> Another hat pin. This is a really cool tutorial on Jennifer's site. So I do suggest if you want to make these pins, go ahead in and check out how to make them. It's fun. It's a fun project. Here, there's more pins here. I don't know if you can see that. More pins here. These two are pockets here. And then this, <clears throat> this is Rain, another model on there with a paper clip. And we come to the end. Two more quotes. This is done exactly the same as the front of the book with tea stained muslin and some cheesecloth down the, the edge. <clears throat> Don't be like the rest of them, darling. <laughs> I love that. That's something I would tell my girls. I had trouble with this the last time. I don't understand why. Get me back in. If you were born without wings, do nothing to keep them from growing. So that's the other one. So it's kind of an inspirational book also. I like that idea. <clears throat> so that is, that is that. That's the book. Now, I'm going to go gather my stuff and get it together for you so that I can show you how to age those things with wax, beeswax. Really cool. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I'm back. So I'm back in the art room. I've changed my filming location because of background noise. I'm gonna do the best that I can to get any background noise out of this. But when I show you any art methods, I have to do it from here because this is where all of my things are. So, okay, here's where you start. You take a piece of tissue paper, iron it as flat as you can get it, and then stamp it. If you use a water-based stamp, when you watercolor it, it's going to run into it a little bit. If that bothers you, then I would use something that's permanent, like stays on. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've stamped it, ironed it, and started to watercolor it so that you don't have to sit through me doing all the watercoloring through the whole thing. This is this is this. Oh, no. This is a Heartfelt Creations. Let me show you that. Heartfelt Creations. And it's called a uh, blushing rose background. I love their stamps. They stamp really nicely. So you lay it down on a piece of paper because it's tissue paper. So the, that water is going to bleed through a little bit. You see all the little dots where it bled through. The other tip that I have is as you're moving along, it bleeds through a little bit and it will start to stick. So periodically, very gently, just lift it up. I like to do it from the back because it's more muted and the, I don't want the color to be as strong on this. I want it to be vintage and old looking. Oh, these are the, here's the paints that I'm using. They're Prima, Prima Pastel Dreams. I got all of this as a set. This is a watercolor pen. You can get them, I think, anywhere. This happens to be a Prima one because it came with the paint. So first, get a little drop of water on your brush. Oop, that has pink on it. Um, don't over wet the brush because if you do, it's going to really bleed through the tissue paper and you'll put a hole in it. Get a little bit of paint on there and just go ahead and start to gently add it with not, like I said, not too much water. If you're using tissue paper, if you do this on cardstock, of course you can do it however you want. <clears throat> the cardstock will hold up to it. The tissue paper though. It gives it a little bit of a opaque look when it's put down with wax and when it's not put down with wax that actually turned out to be my very my very favorite was when I'm sorry when it's not put on tissue paper just done directly on the Harley script it comes out really pretty so I'm gonna do that too on camera so that's it that is painted completely painted just very lightly not a lot of water gently pick it up because when you pick it up like I said it's gonna stick so, uh, you know what, I'm going to keep this here because the wax is really a mess. So, take the card that you're laying it on, 
whatever stamp, whatever card, whatever size. This is directly on the Harley script. You're going to see it come through. You saw the girls. The girls are on the tea stain paper, so that's the difference in the look. I'm just using a, a brush from AC Moore yesterday. Don't leave it. If you have a crock pot and you melt the wax in a crock pot, don't leave your brush in there because it will, it will melt. Now I have a, a funky, I don't know, what is that, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> so here I have the wax. This is beeswax, and I keep it in a crock pot. I don't know if you can see that crock pot right there. You, you don't have to keep it in a crock pot. If you're only going to do this method once, you can use a vegetable can, just an old, any can, really. Put the wax into the clean can, put the can into a pan of boiling water, and melt it that way. Kind of like you would melt chocolate, same thing. And then, this is going to take a second, because my brush, the wax inside of my brush is not melted. Here's where you begin to add the paint or the wax. Take your hand, take your hand, press down, not too hard or you'll rip the paper and go, and go in an outward motion because if you, if you go towards the middle, you're going to get a lot of air bubbles in the middle and you probably won't like that. But it's only tissue paper so you can play and play with this until you feel like you've got it down pat. I'm moving a little bit quickly for video, the video purpose. You can take your time with it. You don't have to move quickly. The reason that I like this is because it gives it, I use it a lot in mixed media. It gives it a um, textured effect. So where I'm looking for texture, I actually put a bunch of art pieces on a show one time and they were all done in wax. The, the final painting was covered in beeswax and people loved it. Like they couldn't stop touching it. <laughs> I told them that they could touch it because it's textural. So if you're a touchy feely kind of person, it gives it a lot of interest in it. Like see in an art piece, you can see where it's puddling up and, and you might want that, you might not. But when you finish with it, you go over it with a heat gun and you chase a lot of the a lot of the wax off of it until you get it exactly where you want it. I think I want a little bit more over here. A little bit more here. So now it's really muted. You can see that it's really muted. Where am I gonna lay my brush? Um it's it dries almost immediately. It hardens rather almost immediately. And then that's what it looks like at this phase. So because I want you to be able to read those words, I'm going to go over it with a heat gun. But first, I'm going to do this, which is, this could be like a little tuck card somewhere. You could cut it down. If you were doing one that was maybe for a gardener and you were filling it with different flowers, you could script write the type of flower that's on there before you do this, like I did with the girls' names. Um, so I love the way that the script, you know what, let's do this. Let's put a little bit of ink on half of this so that we can see the difference. I'm just going to do the bottom quickly with, with more ink so that it's darker. I think, personally, when you do this without the ink, it still comes up dark, which was a, really a cool surprise, and I, I, loved the, I loved the look of it. So now we have part of it with wax and part of it without. This is watercolor, this stamp. Sunrise Lily Swirls. There's three of them in there and they're very pretty. Um, so what I did was I watercolored directly onto the cardstock here. This is oh, dropping everything. This is uh, parchment paper. So I just printed the Harley script right onto the parchment paper, put the stamp on there, used the watercolor, got it to the to the place that I wanted it, and now we'll put the wax on. And in this instance, you don't have to worry about getting wrinkles or air bubbles or anything like that. It just goes right on there. And then when you're finished, you will chase it off, which I will do for you in a minute. I'll probably edit some of this out so you don't have to sit and watch all of this wax application. Ooh, that's cool. I like the way that it, it brings out these colors. Make sure that you keep a paper towel under your work surface or you're going to get it everywhere. 
I have wax everywhere. I even have it on my hand right now. Surprisingly, it didn't burn, but I don't suggest getting it on your hands. Okay. So now this is unwaxed, or I'm sorry, uninked, and this is inked. But you can see how the places where Jennifer has applied the ink um, to the to the background turns a little bit darker. If you want it even darker, you can put that on first, or you can put it on next. You can put it on afterwards. <clears throat> So now, first things first, let's do the tissue paper. So this is the tissue paper. You take your heat gun. Don't hold it in one place for too long because it will smoke and you will um, wind up burning the, the tissue paper. You'll wind up with burn marks. I had that happen on one or two that I liked the effect. I actually liked it. So if you wanted the burned effect, you could just hold it there for a few minutes longer. Do this over top of the paper towel. Because you're chasing that wax off, it's going to run down to the bottom and into the paper towel. I don't think you can really see on camera what's happening, but it turns, um, it's kind of like embossing powder. It, it turns that, that see-through color when you get the heat on there because it's becoming liquid. And you can see how as the wax is coming off, the Harley script is actually getting darker. Just keep chasing it around and laying that, I don't know if you can see where it's coming off on the paper towel, but you'll see it when you're doing it. It runs right into the paper towel. There's a lot of it running off right here. I hope you can see that. Right now there's an air bubble in here. The heat will actually uh, bubble, it will bubble up underneath the tissue paper, but then it kind of evaporates. I don't know if you can see that smoke, that's what I was talking about. It can smoke a little bit. If that bothers you, I would do this in a ventilated area. So there you have that. The back, the wax tends to come through the back, so it gives it a waxy appearance in the back. If you wanted to use this as just a tuck card, I would leave it as it is. If you wanted to use it as a note, like maybe uh, the person you're give, you're gifting this to someone and you wanted this to be the note, then I would line it with some paper because you, you're not going to be able to write on this. I don't think you could experiment with it and see. I don't know if you can see the texture on there. I really like this effect, but like I said, I've, I've worked with wax a lot and I, I love it. I love it because it gives that mad scientist edge that I, that I like to have. <laughs> okay. So here, we'll do this one. Um, I really like this. So for this purpose, for these books, I actually think that I like it better stamped directly onto the cardstock rather than the tissue paper. Like I said, the tissue paper gives it an opaque look and it's great for mixed media because of the texture. But look how vibrant the colors are coming up. I hope you can see that. Let me see. Be careful with your hands. Okay. I like it the way it is. If you wanted it really flat, <clears throat> you just keep going over it. Um, what I did was I took a lot of the wax off of the flower so that you would get this vibrant color that came through and then I left more wax around the edges so it would get that almost a, a ghostly look to it like um, really ethereal and then also with this if you wanted to you could line the back and use it for writing to someone and then a few other things that I played with was I used one of the tags and I stamped I made two of them and I stamped both sides this is stamped and watercolored without any wax on it. This is stamped and watercolored directly onto the cardstock with the Harley script and waxed on the back and then I made a paper clip out of that. If you wanted to use the brown paper, this is an example. This is my least favorite. I probably would use a much more vibrant color stamp ink and stamp it with that like maybe red. And uh, I backed it with regular 
paper and I stuck the paper clip between the two layers and put wax on this. But the reason that I did this was so that you could see that you can use your stamps for a multitude of purposes. And um, if you wanted to put the wax on it, it gives it a really different look. And so that's it. I hope that you found something useful. Sorry about the mess on my desk. I am a messy artist. Um, I hope you found something useful in what I showed you today and that you enjoyed this. And I will definitely be back next month with a different template. And probably in between that, I want to take a piece of tissue paper and show you how you can apply it to a candle. And then you could gift that, like you could put this stamp onto a candle you put, you put the stamp onto the tissue paper and then you put the tissue paper onto the candle. So I'm thinking about making a quick video to show you how that can be done. And uh, that's it. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.